Good morning. Good morning. You're all very welcome uh, to worship here in Priest Hill this morning, whether you're with us here in the church building or watching online. Um, it's I want everybody to feel very much a part of, of the church family. For those who are watching this at a, at a later stage, we uh, probably filled most of the pews in the church this morning, but we do have a hall that is ready for people to come and, and worship as well. I have to announce that we'll be taking a photograph again this morning. If you are visiting uh, and we don't have contact details for you, will you please put your name on the sheet in the porch with a number and um, take the pen home with you, please. The offering plate is at, is at, is at the door. I'm grateful for those who have uh, needed access to the premises this week for getting in touch because we do need to keep a record of all activity. So please do either contact myself or Brian if you need in at any stage. And again, we're not um, gathering up any more clothes bags to be stored in, in the minor hall just for, for now. A couple of other things. There is a connectional prayer meeting tomorrow night on Zoom for the whole of the Methodist Church in Ireland just to pray for the current situation. And if you go on irishmethodist.org, you need to register to get the details for that. Also from next Sunday the 30th, the wearing of face masks um, I don't really want to use the word mandatory, but it really is. That's what the church leaders of all the main denominations have come out and said. But obviously, if you have a reason for not being able to wear it, that's, that's perfectly uh, fine. I want to thank um, those who turned up yesterday to help tidy up. We had no problem social distancing, because there wasn't very many of us. Um, so uh, if anybody wants to come with their... Um, uh, weeding pad and their bucket at any stage, please feel free. Uh, it's always interesting when, when you're working in the church grounds, people notice and you know we're asking where we, we're opening and when we, ha when we were able to say we've been open for a few few weeks now but it was then there's people walking and cycling up, up and down the, the road there uh, who were interested in what was what was happening here. Also want to uh, welcome Tom to lead us in our worship this morning. We had, it was just one final thing, um, I'm trying not to write things down because then that means bringing bring a notebook. We had our church council a couple of Mondays ago, go now, when we were looking at um, all of our organisations and the Reverend Clark has been in touch uh, with, with the leaders and we're trying to work out what it is we will be able to do uh, in the next few, few, few months. Um, and we're working with the youth department as, as well. So you, you'll be kept up, updated on that. We've also, Brian has organised, we have um, broadband in, uh, so we will be able to live stream our services in due course if and when that is needed. But it'll also be there for when we have different speakers and um, different organisations need, need to, use, to use that uh, facility. The Reverend Clark's on holidays, uh, from tomorrow to, for, for, for a week. So if you need anything, please contact Tom um, or, or myself. Thank you. Thanks, Pamela. Morning, everybody. It was a very subdued good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I, f I suppose we are a bit subdued these days. This thing's been going on for so long and we begin to wonder where on earth uh, it's all going to finish, but um, the theme for today is that there's someone very special watching over us, someone that uh, uh, cares for us. They say that the UK has more um, cameras observing its population than probably any other uh, country, nation across uh, Europe. If you go into a, a, a city, say London or Manchester or, or even Belfast, chances are there's always a camera watching over you. Now that's a somewhat sinister thought. I, I suppose in some ways it's quite reassuring as well 
that if you get into trouble or uh, there are some issues, somebody attacks you or something like that happens, someone is watching and someone might just manage to get help to you. But it's true to say that we are amongst the most observed, watched over people uh, uh, in the world. But today, we're thinking about the fact that God watches over us too. And there should be nothing sinister in that thought. But it should be a great encouragement to us, especially, especially in moments like these, where everything seems so strange uh, and uh, ominous uh, and uh, challenging. Psalms are wonderful. They teach us so much. They encourage us so often and so well. I'm going to be later on reading Psalm 33 as our scripture passage. But the 13th verse simply says, From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all of humankind. And then verse 18 says, The eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him on those whose hope is in his unfailing love. These are tough, difficult, stressful times. And I want to simply just reassure all of us that there is one who cares, that we are special in his sight, and that he watches over us. Now, unfortunately, we're still not allowed to sing, which is a very un-Methodist sort of thing. Uh, Methodists are noted for their singing. Well, personally, I'm not, but Methodists generally are. Um, we love to sing when we gather for worship. We're not allowed to do that, but uh, we're going to be uh, encouraged, I I'm sure, by the, the piece that will be coming up on the screens. So please remain seated and just listen to uh, the worship song that uh, we're now going to enjoy. <laughs>
I'm sure we're uh, humming along nicely to that one. Great old uh, Irish hymn going back to the 8th century. We used to be able to sing it in Gaelic. I don't think I would be able to do it now, but it's a beautiful old hymn which reminds us of the continuity of our faith. It stretches back into the mists of time. For centuries, people have known God's presence and God's love. For centuries, people have known God's presence and God's love. And we today, scattered as we are through this church, and those who will be watching later uh, on uh, YouTube or Facebook or whatever it is, we are part of that wonderful family of God. Let's hold on to that thought now as we go to prayer. Let's pray. And remember, at the end of the prayer, we will be saying, Our Father. So it is children approaching their Father as we join in prayer in this place. We are God's children. He is our Heavenly Father. And he cares for each and every one of us. Lord, sometimes it's hard to understand your love. Sometimes it's even harder to accept your love. Sometimes you seem terribly distant and far away from us, as distant as the stars of heaven above. Those stars may be light years away, yet the light that emanates from those wonderful lights in the heaven eventually reaches the earth. We don't have to wait for light years to pass for your love to reach us, however, because your love is always there. It always surrounds us, even in our bleakest, or perhaps one could say, especially in our bleakest moments. These are tough times. We acknowledge that. Times when sometimes we are close to despair. Yet we hear the voice from heaven say, I am with you. I am your heavenly father. I will never stop loving you. As the scriptures have already reminded us, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love. Lord, let's not worry about that word fear. It's not a proper uh, translation. It doesn't give the proper idea. We don't fear you in the sense that you are there to do us harm. What the psalmist was simply saying, he loves you. He respects you. And he seeks to follow in your paths, to do the things you wanted him to do, and to be the person that you wanted him to be. So may we love you and respect you, and may we seek to follow in your paths, to be the people you want us to be, so that we will feel a sense of kinship with you, and we will know your presence with us day and daily. We know that we have let you down. Every one of us has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, as the old prayer has it. Yet thank you that you are a merciful and loving God, more than willing to forgive, more than willing to wash away our sin and to give us a fresh start. So whoever we are, whatever we are, in whatever situation we find ourselves, 
we need not fear you. In the sense that some people understand that word fear. But we can turn to you with hope, with expectation, with joy, and with peace. So come to us, bless us now. And when we leave this place, may we take that blessing with us into this uh, needy world of ours, this fretful, fearful world of ours. And may, may we share some of the hope that we have experienced as a result of our time together in this service. And we pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, Tom uh, Clark has organized a number of people to give a little three-minute uh, lowdown, he has it here in the order of service, on lockdown and all of that. I'm not sure, is there somebody organized for today? If so, would you? Thank you. Could you come and share with us your experiences uh, about lockdown? I think a lot of people might be angry at God that this has happened, that he's allowed this to happen, um, especially if they've had, you know, loved ones or anyone that's, you know, passed away or become ill because of it. Um, but we have to remember that God let, left us in charge of his world and even though he's still in control of, ever, of everything, he's trusted us to make our own decisions and he trusts us to do the right thing. Um, he still has plans for all of us and he still wants us to trust and have faith in him, especially during a time like this. Um, despite all the bad things that have happened, you know, people becoming ill and not being able to see people, um, I suppose in a, a few certain ways, um, a, few good, a few good things have come out of it. Um, People, people actually value meeting up in person now. Like I know in, in the centre of Lisburn, there's a wee cafe just in the square that is absolutely packed every time I see it. And I just think people actually enjoy um, meeting up with other people now rather than just hiding behind a phone all the time. Um, I know obviously in a lot of places where hygiene wouldn't have been much of a factor, they are now and they're much healthier to be in and the infection rate is much lower um, and for a certain amount of people they've been able to spend more time at home with their kids and their family whereas if 
they have such a busy schedule they wouldn't have had the time to. Um, me personally, I've just taken up doing more exercise and eating healthier and running before work. So yeah, I think it's allowed a lot of people to do a lot of different things with their time off. Um, things to pray about the future. Um, during winter time, it'll be it'll be a high season for the flu and corona. So um, people will be a lot more vulnerable with with both factors coming into play. Um, and even the restrictions are now, are now being, at the moment, restrictions are being lifted and reinstated and people are still dying from it despite the, despite the decreasing numbers and people are still being badly affected by it. So just to remember to, to pray for those who are still suffering badly. Um, yeah, just pray for everything, for anyone um, that's in a worse situation than yourself. People in poverty, in poor countries, um, people that don't have the medical advances and the, you know, the, the protection that we do, like masks and um, the PPE gear and everything. Um, also pray for medical professionals, doctors, nurses, um, anyone who's constantly exposed by it. Yeah, that's me done. Thank you very much for that. It's uh, interesting that uh, Tom Clark has arranged that the people from all sectors of our community and all age groups uh, have been asked to, to just share their experiences. We all react to situations differently, depending on where we come from, what our age group is, what our uh, background, our history is, so this is just a useful exercise to get alongside other people uh, and to see things through their eyes. I'm going to read a passage now from Scripture. It's a passage I've already referred to, and it's the, 20, sorry, the 33rd Psalm. Now, it's a, a reasonably long psalm, so apologies for that, but there was no way that I could leave any of the psalm out. So just uh, focus on it for a moment or two. Come along with me on a little journey through this psalm, Psalm 33. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. I love that expression. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. And that, that word revere really is, is a proper understanding of the word, the previous word, fear. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purpose of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind or humankind, as we would now say. From his dwelling place, he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do, no king is saved by the size of his army, no warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, 
it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. And may God bless the reading of his word. Amen. So today we're thinking about this fact that there is one who watches over us, one who cares for us. Not like CCTV in our city streets, watching in case we take a wrong step or do something that we shouldn't do or be somewhere that we shouldn't be. There is one who watches over us, but for a very benign reason. Why does God do that? Why does God reveal himself or, or show himself to us? Well, first we must understand who this God is who is watching over us. I sometimes, well, I, I love informality in worship. Being stiff and starchy is not my particular style. But sometimes, sometimes I think we can be a little bit palsy walsy with God. Um, and really that's not what God wants from us. He watches over us. He says to us, this is who I am. I am the Lord of heaven and earth and sea and sky. I, I talked about the Psalms earlier and how much I love the Psalms. Psalm 8 is a wonderful Psalm. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens from the lips of children and infants. You have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens... The work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is man? What is humanity that you are mindful of us? The son of man, the daughters of man, that you care for us. As we think about this God who watches over us, we recognize that he is the one who made the heaven and earth and sea and sky. And as such, he deserves our respect, our reverence, our praise. So this is the one who watches over us. Uh, uh, that Psalm, Psalm 8 is attributed to David. And in my mind's eye, I think of David as a young shepherd boy lying on his back one, one, one uh, clear uh, night with the, sun, with the sun down and the moon shining and he's looking up into the heavens, the darkness of the heavens with the twinkling stars and the moon uh, and he's thinking to himself, this is the God who cares for me. What is man or what, what is humanity that you are mindful of us? that you care for us. The God who watches over us is the God of creation. Yet even though he made the sun, the moon, the stars, all the wonders of this earth, each one of us is special and precious in his sight. What are we, the psalmist said, David said, what are we that you should care for us? What am I that you should care for me? That's what caused David to write that psalm. Lying on the broad of his back, perhaps, one night, looking up into the heavens, 
seeing all the wonders of the universe. What am I that you should care for me? But that idea of God watching over us, we, we need to push it on just a little bit further. And we need to, to remind ourselves that God watches over us just to show us as individuals he cares for us. And he wants us as individuals to reach out to him. Augustine was one of the great um, leaders of the early church back in the first century. He wrote this, man's heart is restless until it finds its rest in you. In other words, man or humanity, we were made to have a relationship with this God. Blaise Pascal was a French uh, philosopher back in the uh, 1600s, and he wrote this. He talked about a God-shaped void in the heart of every man and woman on earth. So God watches over us to show us that individually he wants to fill that void. He wants to, to end that restlessness that uh, Augustine wrote about back in the first century AD. God isn't just the God of the heaven and the earth and the sea and the sky. He wants to be our God. That's why he sent Jesus into the world in the first place. And one of the great things that Jesus taught his disciples to say was, Our Father, who art in heaven. So God watches over each of us to show us that we can have that sort of uh, father-son, father-daughter relationship with this God. Every one of us is special. Every one of us is precious. And when other people put us down and when other people uh, mock us and jeer us at us, we need to respond by saying, ah, but I am somebody. I am important because God loves me. And he showed that love by sending Jesus into the world. And when we enter into that relationship with God, then it's something that lasts. Something that lasts. Something that will see us through the darker times. Because God also watches over us to guide us and to protect us as we make our decisions. Do I turn left or right? Do I do this or that? He is there to watch over us and to protect us and guide us. Psalm 119, uh, verse 105 uh, is um, another of my uh, uh, favorite passages of Scripture. Uh, this psalm talks about God uh, guiding us. Verse 105 uh, of Psalm 119 simply says, Your word is like a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is like a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God, as it were, plants his word in our hearts and in our lives to guide us and to keep us safe. When God rescued the Israelites from slavery down in Egypt, uh, he just didn't abandon them, but he led them to the promised land. Now, it took them a long time. Forty years, we're told, they wandered in the wilderness because they were uh, not the best of sheep for following the shepherd. Poor old Moses, I'm sure, was pulling his hair out 
uh, from time to time. They did their own thing. They went their own way. They got lost. And because of that, it took them 40 years to make the relatively short journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. But through it all, God never gave up, but he continued to guide them. Sometimes we are a bit like the Israelites. We get it wrong. Uh, we head in the wrong direction. Sometimes we give up on God. The thing is, he never gives up on us. Isn't that amazing? We give up so often on him, but he never gives up on us. He is watching over us day after day. The eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love. Many times I've sort of almost reached that stage where, you know, things were so black. Where is God in all of this? I'm sure you've been there too many, many times. In this current situation, many people are in that situation where they have given up on God. But God has not given up on them. He will not give up on us. He guided the Israelites through all their meanderings and wanderings in the desert until eventually they got it right and he led them to the promised land. There is a special place reserved for us in heaven, the scriptures tell us, and all we need to do is to keep on that journey and then we will enjoy the nearer presence of God forever. I don't understand it. I don't know what heaven's going to be like. But it's the place where we will find the almighty love of God in a, a special way, a new way that we can't even begin to understand now. And so there it is. God watches over us because he loves us and he wants us to know his love in a deeper and in a fuller way. We've almost finished. Let's turn to prayer just for a moment or two. There's loads of things that we need to remember in prayer, people that we need uh, to bring before the Lord. Uh, we remember the Smith family over in uh, Broom Hedge. Thelma sadly passed away. The, the funeral was held on Friday. I wasn't able to attend the funeral because I was conducting a, a wedding down in County Cavan. But uh, we remember the family. We remember the folk in uh, Quigley's Point in Moville. You may have seen uh, the, the, the story of that tragic uh, accident in Moville where Geraldine Miller lost her husband, son and daughter. Uh, we think of students whose lives have been rather turned into chaos because of the exam fiasco uh, and uh, we'll be thinking about them and students and teachers going back to school uh, in the not too distant future. We'll be thinking about uh, farmers experiencing difficulties currently with uh, the harvest. And then finally, just one last thing, the, the COVID situation uh, and the current uncertainty about it all. So these are issues we bring now before the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we think of the Smith family and we commend them into your loving care. We think of Thelma's brother, uh, Raymond, and her daughter, Lindsay, and her little grandson, Daniel. And we pray for them, praying that something of your peace and your joy and your love will be present at this very dark moment uh, in their lives. And for all others who have been bereaved, 
we offer our love and our sympathy as well, and we commend them into your hands. We think of the Mullen family up in uh, Moville. We remember Geraldine in hospital, this tragic accident which took her uh, husband, her son, and her daughter. We can't even begin to imagine what she must be experiencing at this particular time. But we pray for all who will minister to her and for the community as it stands alongside her in her desperate sadness and loss. We think of the, the confusion that students have been experiencing in these past days and weeks because of the examination fiasco. Many will have found that their whole future education has been thrown into confusion and doubt. Not being able to get access to the university course that they wanted uh, to adopt or to enter into. So we pray for them and we pray that this will be resolved and that the confusion will be dispersed and the way ahead will become clear in the coming days. We think of teachers preparing for the reopening of schools and again they are facing all sorts of issues all sorts of problems. So we pray for those in responsible, responsible positions that they will, uh, as it were, smooth the way or help the uh, teachers to smooth the way so that our young folk can return to school or to college once again. We remember farmers struggling to bring the harvest in the power of nature has been very clearly displayed. We see it uh, in those bushfires in California. We see it uh, in our own situation here in this part of the world. We are so dependent upon nature. And yet, Lord, sometimes it seems as though we have misused the world's resources and as a result we see climate change and other uh, issues arise. So we pray for farmers here in our own locality seeking to, to bring in the harvest and we pray for better weather uh, for these coming weeks. Then finally we think again of the COVID situation and we pray for the uh, scientists as they seek for um, cures for COVID or for vaccines which will prevent COVID from becoming uh, a problem in years to come. We pray for doctors and nurses in our hospitals. All those who are battling to preserve life. Lord, you are the great physician. And again, we turn to you for your wisdom and your guidance. Separate us now, Lord, at the end of our time of worship. Lead us safely to our homes and continue to protect and preserve us in these coming days. For we pray in your name. Amen. Then one final uh, piece of praise, and after that we will uh, share together in the blessing.
And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes to the hillside where justice and mercy The Son of God gave his life for us, and our measureless debt was erased. Jesus, to you we lift our eyes. Jesus, our glory and our prize, we adore you. Behold you, our Savior ever true. O oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. Turn your eyes to the morning and see. Christ the Lion awake, what a glorious dawn, fear of death is gone, for we carry his life in our veins. Jesus, to you we lift our eyes, Jesus, our glory and our pride. Savior ever true, O oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. Turn your eyes to the heavens, our King will return. Bless each other as we share in the grace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.